CNBC Meets, Defining Values, brought to you by UOB Private Bank. He co-founded one of China's most successful tech companies before stepping down to focus on his true passion, philanthropy. I've come to Hong Kong to meet Charles Chen Yidan here on CNBC Meet, Defining Values. Charles Chen Yadan is not only an entrepreneur, but also an avid philanthropist. In 1998, he co-founded the internet startup Tencent with four of his childhood friends. Today, it's one of the world's largest internet companies and the first in Asia to break through the $500 billion valuation mark. Tencent is a conglomerate that specializes in social media, gaming, mobile payments, music and more. Its popular messaging platform WeChat claims 1 billion monthly users and Tencent Games is the largest gaming company in the world by revenue and market cap. Despite this extraordinary success, Charles stepped down from the company to focus his efforts full-time on philanthropy. In 2016, he established the Yidan Prize Foundation, the world's largest monetary prize for education. The award recognizes outstanding research and ideas in education development. Charles, it's lovely to meet you here in Hong Kong. Yeah, welcome to Hong Kong. Oh, thank you so much. Of course, your focus now is on philanthropy and education. It's your lifelong passion. Where did the interest come from? Education, uh, I sense to my grandmother. My grandmother, she was illiterate, but she raised my father from a countryside child to be a university graduate. So my father from countryside to the city and he met my mother and I was born. So education changed my family fate. Sure, I am one of a million lives that transformed by the power of education. So today as a philanthropist, I want to support education that can influence the others. So how important do you think your grandmother was to you as a young child? My grandmother is the respected person for me. Um, she was kind to the others, like neighbors, friends, and someone he unknown who want to add the help. So she can see the others with no condition. That influenced me very much. So she strongly believed the value of education. That is, this value instilled in me uh, completely. Mm. And Charles, what was it like for you at school? You had the stress of exams. What was the feeling like there for you? It's a challenge in college entrance examination. In China, it's called Gao Kao. That is a college entrance. Uh, actually, my biggest failure is in this important examination. I have big pressure. So I fail in my favorite Chinese language. I don't pass. Fail. Luckily, the other majors is still have in enough scores. I can enter university, Shenzhen University. I grow up there. Um, so I enter 
uh, chemistry major. This is my uh, first failure. Uh, but when I uh, entered the school, I, I plotted with myself. I need to work hard and graduation. And the other type, how to do? I need to find out which one I am interested in. So I put more time on student service. So this biggest challenge also changed my life. Because this failure made me put more time on student uh, service. And in chemistry, I do a lot of student service, like to uh, support the new students. Through this service, I met my schoolmate, a girl, a pretty girl in chemistry. Now is my wife. So <laughs> I sense for chemistry. I sense for examination failure. That makes me be the luckiest man. <laughs> and I also met my middle school classmates, the future co-founder of Tencent. Charles, you said you met your wife yes. uh, while you were studying chemistry. How important was that moment for you and what influence has she had? You give me a good opportunity to praise my wife. <laughs> um, when I met my wife, yeah, I think uh, her character in attracted me because she is very kindly to the others, consider others. Actually, I can find my grandmother's spirit. Sometimes I, I will uh, say to my wife, search for her because two persons together in the life will make the burden half because you share it. and your happiness double because you share it. coming up the birth of one of china's biggest tech companies when we stop tencent we just thinking how to be alive what does luxury mean to you luxury in India, I discovered that true luxury isn't something you buy off a shelf. True luxury is a feeling that you are the Maharani of your world. And it can be all designed around you. is yours. India showed me that luxury doesn't follow designers and brands. True luxury follows its own heart. on Mobile One The Grid. We go behind the scenes at the 24 Hours of Le Mans. Look at Cross Garage teamwork in Formula One. And talk to Kevin Harvick about the driver's role in NASCAR. Catch it all on Mobile One The Grid. And Henrik Stenson took home his sixth career victory at the Wyndham Championship. The 2013 FedEx Cup champion broke the course's 72-hole record, becoming the event's 19th international-born winner. He broke into the top 25 of the FedEx Cup standings and secured a spot in the playoffs for the fifth consecutive year. Welcome back to CNBC Meets Defining Values. I've come to Hong Kong to meet one of the world's most successful tech entrepreneurs 
and philanthropist, Charles Chen Yidan. Tell me about those early days of Tencent. Because I also read, Charles, you didn't tell your parents because you were in a government job yeah. and for three years you hadn't told them about your new business. We found Tencent in 1998. Actually, our five founders have a stable job. When we come together to start Tencent, Tencent is our second job. Yeah, but the future is unstable. I don't dare to tell my parents because when I tell them, I, I know they will worry. But they heard, heard from the other friends. They tell me, is it right? They are worried yeah, uh, uh, at that time. But I tell them and explain them my, uh, what I want to do. And okay, now company is not bad. VC has entered, don't worry. They are hesitant, but they still uh, support to me. So I tell them later. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, damn <Dan>, mom. <laughs> what kind of confidence do you think it took for you to start the company with your friends at the time and to keep going, even though the first year or so was not so successful? I think uh, have good attitude and trust each other very important because when we beginning we cannot imagine the future cannot imagine it if you fail it one day and cannot imagine Tencent will grow up like today so we just at that moment just work hard and try our best in China we face a new time burst of internet so it's, it's a new issue to everyone. So open mind and learn from it is very, very important. And so during this uh, journey, five founders support each other and continue to make uh, a common value is very important. I think the common value is about the relationship and mission. Because we are uh, schoolmates and friends, so we are, we are honest. Could you ever have imagined the five of you that you would become so successful? When we start Tencent, we just thinking how to be alive, how to struggle for the difficult face to us. This situation, until IPO, we still keep this attitude because after IPO, it's not an end, it's a new beginning. When we set up the WeChat in the mobile phone time, we need a lot of opportunity and also challenge. Till today, we need to face the AI, new technology, uh, automation, big data, how to do. A lot of opportunity. Of course, Tencent believed a lot in philanthropy and you became the chairman of the foundation. Why did you feel as a business it was so important to give back? When we start Tencent from 1998 till 2004, we IPO in Hong Kong, we always thinking it's time for us to feedback to the society, including our many young users. So in 2007, we set up the Tencent Foundation. And every year, if you take some profit to transfer and donate to the foundation, we became the first non-profit charity foundation of the internet. The Wenchuan earthquake in 2008, where over 70,000 people lost their lives, seemed to be a turning point for you and Tencent. How did the company respond? When a occurred occur in, in Wenchuan, 
Tencent, like the other companies, donate um, 20 million yuan to the peoples. But from Tencent, we think we are internet company. We can do more, use uh, our advantage to do it. At that time, we have uh, some products, business products, like payment, like uh, uh, QQ platform, uh, something like that. We set up this platform. Let the individuals through the internet pay to donate to the Wenchuan. They also donate more than 20 million yuan. But it comes from individuals. Many individuals, whether they donate one dollar or one cent, they are put a positive influence to the society. So it's great. From that, we think for long term, we use advantage to set up a charitable platform, connect NGO and foundation and individuals, become our Tencent Foundation strategy. Do you think that philanthropy has now become part of the Chinese culture? Chinese traditional culture encourage people to benefit to the world, to the others. Many ideas from the culture encourage people give more, have more. But how to do it? Because in the past time, it's seldom or way to do it. Just put a donate box to do it. But internet made it easy to donate that this traditional culture burst in this new technology. Because in America or Europe, they, they are easy to pay. Uh, check, credit card. But in China, no check. And credit card just in few peoples in city. But internet can let everybody can pay. So if you have a birth time for Chinese philanthropy, Charles, in 2013, you chose to step down from Tencent yes. to focus on philanthropy yes. and education. Yes. Why did you make that decision? Education is an idea. Need many stakeholders to devote to it. And education not only belongs a country, it belongs to humanity. So how to do it? I always thinking of it after I step down. One day, at night, I write my wish in my diary. I have a wish. Establish a global prize beyond religion, race, and nation to help people realize the universe and distribution humanity. They are closed the book. Coming up, Charles Chen Yadan tells me why he set up one of the world's biggest education prizes. For me, success is not a result. Success is this journey. The United Kingdom had a long-standing, a long-enduring special relationship with the United States. The European Union doesn't allow our farmers to go and trade. Essentially, when you're paying a 275% tax, and that's essentially a trade barrier. You can't trade. Yes, there are some issues on which we disagree. We disagree on the steel and aluminium tariffs that are being imposed on the European Union. Of course, the tariffs are being applied to the United Kingdom because we're part of the European Union. Uh, when we leave the, e the European Union, and at that point, we will want to see what flexibility we can have and where the United States wants to go. I want the barriers taken down. I want our farmers to be able to trade. I want to be able to sell cars in there just like they sell cars in here. 
and it's all going to work out. It's all going to work out. We've got a good trading and investment relationship with the U.S. already, but that special relationship between the U.S. and the U.K. continues, and I think will endure long into the future. Siwoo Kim is your 2017 Players' Champion. Last season, South Korea's Siwoo Kim became the youngest winner of the Players' Championship, and only the second Korean-born player to capture the title. Kim is the first Asian player in PGA Tour history to win twice before the age of 22. The victory moved him into the top 30 of the FedEx Cup standings, punching a ticket into the playoffs for the second year in a row. CNBC covers retail because it's about so much more than just shopping. Two-thirds of the domestic economy is powered by consumer spending. You have to look at earnings reports. You have to talk to analysts. You count shopping bags when you're walking down the street. Black Friday may be smaller than it once was. Cyber Monday may be growing in importance, but they're both very significant. Black Friday online sales topping Adobe's even very bullish expectations. CNBC's focus is financial news and the economy. Retail plays a key part in both of those. Welcome back to CNBC Meets Defining Values here in Hong Kong. Philanthropist and entrepreneur Charles Chen Yadan dedicates his time to improving education around the world. In 2016, Charles used his own money to set up the Yidan Prize Foundation. Its mission is to create a better world through education. The Yidan Prize pushes for progress in the field of education. I envision the prize as a platform that brings together the best ideas about education from around the world. The foundation awards two annual monetary prizes, the Yidan Prize for Education Research and the Yidan Prize for Education Development. Each winner receives a gold medal and a total sum of almost 4 million U.S. dollars. It's the world's largest monetary award for education. So the Yidan Prize is truly visionary. Thus we have this two-pronged power of education to be instrumental and influential. And that is why the bold vision of Dr. Charles Chan Yidan in creating this sustainable international prize is so important. Why is it so important for you to have this prize? From my heart, philanthropy and education is very important. And I believe education is the ultimate answer to social progress. Yidan Prize just put the spotlight on the global best education research and best educational practice. So I think we can imagine a picture in the coming 20 years or 50 years, many projects across global can benefit from big ideas from Yidan Prize laureates. So Yidan Prize is not only an award, it's also a global education known platform. Every December we have Yidan Prize Summit. Through this summit, we invite policy makers teachers, educators come together to discuss educational problems and the way to solve education problems to exchange and communicate. You had this vision of the Yidan Prize. How important is it for you to see the results? For me, success is not a result. Success is this journey, a li lifelong learning that is very important. So success, success is not about comp comparing myself to the others. It's about myself to be better. 
What values would you like education to teach the next generation? How be a good person or happy person or leading person to cooperate with technology and future is most important. So education not only for teaching and about cultivating. There are many people that are very worried about where artificial intelligence takes us. How do we balance the technology taking us to a place that could be dangerous? Technology, in the end, will be enhanced to the product of people. It's a tool, but the challenge is that why we are worried, why are we are anxious? Because we don't know what's the future of the developing of the country and what will we be and what, and what will our next generation be. So education is most important. Through the education, one is generating the future talents. They know what at that time, in the future time, what talents will be and what they cooperate with the new technology. And on the other hand, education system will be changed by technology, whether auto automation, big data or artificial. What are the most important values you want to give to your family? Keep the good relationship and lifelong learning relationship, supportive relationship between wife and husband is very, very important. And to the next generation, I am very simple. Bless they are happy and culture they be independent by themselves. And what keeps driving you to give back? I am grateful to have this opportunity to do philanthropy, to support the others, and do education to support the others. Everyone has a dream. Mine is support more people to realize theirs through education. Charles, thank you so much for talking to me today. It's been such a pleasure. Thank you. CNBC Meets, Defining Values, brought to you by UOB Private Bank. Good morning, Mrs. Wong. Good morning. Your favorite. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Mm. I gotta go. Bye. Bye. Good morning, Mrs. Wong. Good morning. Look what I made for you. Thank you. I think your grandson was around when you had your fall, Mrs. Wong. There's one show that every CEO and every decision maker knows is the most powerful business show in the country. The first morning analysis. Breaking news, politics, and global markets. It's the ultimate pre-market news.